Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle. I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. Today I want to talk about a local crime story. This is somebody who's been charged with an offense right here in Edmonton, Alberta, where I live. This is also with regards to a particularly infamous piece of public art here called the Talus Dome, although locals often call it the Talus Balls. What this sculpture is, is it's a stack of shiny metal stainless steel balls in kind of a, a weird shape, and it's located right next to a roadway. So lots of people don't particularly find this thing to be terribly attractive, and if you're driving by this roadway, the sun off it can sometimes be fairly blinding. But you might think, hey, it's a piece of public art, you know, who really cares that much? They probably hired some local, you know, some local art student, paid them a few dollars, got this thing built. Well, um, they actually hired two guys from California and they paid them $600,000. So this thing's a bit controversial because yeah, it's a $600,000 stack of shiny metal balls. Now, I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm not going to be able to avoid the euphemisms on this one because it's just that kind of story. So here's what happens. A guy is climbing on the balls and he decides or somehow falls in. He gets stuck in between the balls in the middle of this thing and he can't get out because the opening is way up top. So he's stuck in the balls and somebody else comes along. They also want to see the balls. And while they're there, they find out that there's this guy stuck in there. So they call the fire department and they figure, you know, the fire department is going to be excellent at handling this, this ball related situation. And the fire department looks at it. They try to figure it out. They can't really solve this issue. The guy is thoroughly stuck in the balls. So they break out the jaws of life and decide to do a little vasectomy. In fact, they go full Lance Armstrong on this one and they have to remove an entire ball for this guy to get free. And so he does so, he climbs out and he's promptly arrested for mischief. So let's talk a little bit about mischief because yeah, it's worth sort of questioning what's going on here. So this is the offense of mischief. It says everyone commits mischief who willfully A, destroys or damages property, B, renders property dangerous, useless, inoperative, or ineffective, C, obstructs, interferes, uh, sorry, obstructs, interrupts, in or interferes with the lawful use, enjoyment, or operation of property, or obstructs, interrupts, or interferes with any person in the lawful use, enjoyment, or operation of property. And they've charged him with mischief over $5,000, which has some pretty serious potential penalties. So, and it's uh, where it's exceeding uh, $5,000, uh, the maximum jail sentence on that is 10 years. So he's not going to get 10 years in jail, but I don't think that they're going to be able to get any jail time on this one, or in fact, even a conviction. Because when we look at it, um, did he destroy or damage property? I mean, not on his own, certainly. Um, he, And certainly it doesn't appear that he would have done so willfully. I don't think anyone can say that he expected to have this ball-related mishap. That was probably something that happened completely by accident. Nobody goes out to get stuck in the balls. Um, did he render property dangerous, useless, inoperative, or ineffective? Again, probably not. And, you know, even if he did, it doesn't seem like he meant to. Did he obstruct, interrupt, or interfere with the lawful use, enjoyment, or operation of property? I mean, I don't see it here either. If anything, this sculpture only got more hilarious when the guy was stuck in it. Um, it didn't seem like it was actually preventing anybody else from using it in any fashion. And did he, you know, do any of those things with any person in the lawful use, enjoyment, or operation of property? I I'm just not seeing it here. So I think that this guy has been charged pretty much just because they're angry at him and not so much because they can make this stick. The theory that they'd have to be using on this one would be some sort of theory that uh, by getting stuck in it, he willfully caused them to 
have to do damage to it. I think that's a bridge too far. Uh, mischief is intended to sort of target vandalism. People who actually go out to damage property in some fashion. Not people who are idiots and get themselves in trouble. Um, if that was the standard, then there'd be all sorts of people who could be potentially charged with mischief. And I just don't see it. Now, there's a further wrinkle to this story. There's an additional bit of detail that we hadn't considered, which is that apparently there was a back opening to the balls. So if they circled around from the balls to the back, they could have found an escape hatch back there, something they could have opened up and used to help get this guy out. Um, it's a maintenance hatch, apparently. Somehow, somebody's got to go in there to maintain the balls. I don't know what sort of maintenance that would be. Maybe a, you know, a good rub down, a polish. I don't know. But um, apparently there is that hatch there. And the reason why they ended up using the jaws of life to get this guy out instead of the maintenance hatch is that nobody knew it was there. Uh, nobody thought to look for it, and um, quite frankly, it was, you know, this is government, right? So the fire department isn't going to know which branch of government you'd call to ask this sort of thing. Like, hey, um, is there a back entrance to the balls? But, um, so that was there. It wasn't used. Uh, this is also potentially going to be a bit of a discussion uh, when it comes time to actually, you know, decide if this guy's going to be charged. Now, I don't know at this point, I don't think that they've released the name of the guy who got stuck. Um, so I'm just kind of curious. I'm going to be trying to find that out if I can. And I think it'll be really interesting to see, um, just to try to follow this one along because yeah, it's, um, it's interesting. Now, a lot of people there have said that, um, you know, this is not a, a popular art piece. So it wouldn't surprise me, you know, they've said, oh, they've had to cut out an opening there. I don't know if it's lost much, to be honest. Um, just don't fix it. That seems to me to be the solution here. But uh, yeah, apparently this is $600,000 worth of balls. And not only that, a really hilarious thing um, is that it was named, or sorry, one of the artists is named Benjamin Ball. So just to really uh, sort of crack that home. Um, now, if you're wondering what is this art exhibit about, apparently this exhibit um, is, the theme is sort of uh, humans and their relationship with nature. I don't really see it. I think Personally, my suspicion is that the actual theme to this art is we would like to get paid $600,000. That's my, that's my pet theory. Anyway, um, that is the story of what's going on with the Talus Balls incident. Um, I'm going to try to follow this one up. I will bet that this one doesn't end up going to trial and that instead uh, the charges get dropped at some point. But we'll see. Um, anyway... I kind of had to cover this one. A few locals asked me for my thoughts on it. And also, I am way too much of a child to leave this one alone. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you for joining me in this incredibly childish romp into a um, a weird local crime. Um, or at least allegation of a crime. As I said, I don't think there's actually a crime here. But we'll find out. Um We'll see if they can sort of find some court interpretation on this one to uh, to land an offense. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to see more content. Um, maybe share it with some of your less mature friends. Um, I feel like that's this kind of video. I also want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level, CCFR, Canada's National Farms Association, and the Canadian Shooting Sports Association. At the $30 level, Jane Baven Luxor and David Michaud. And at the $20 level, Lindsay Metcalf, Kyle Fox, Haywire, Gerald to the Bailey, Cameron Johnson, Andrew Elsich, and Vicky. Thank you as well to my $10 supporters who will be in the crawl immediately following. 
Thank you for watching. I hope this is armed you with knowledge. Probably not. And see you next time.